Good morning. Happy Friday. Woohoo! We made it. No, I'm just there. Uh, seriously, uh, today uh, we'll talk more about Chapter 14, Part 2, which is acids and bases coming together. We're into buffers at Henderson Hasselbach. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Today, uh, I will see most of you at 1.10 p.m. for lab. Uh, problem set number two is up. Quiz number two will follow. You'll turn in the equilibrium constant lab from last week, and we'll start the Le Chatelier's principal lab too, which is kind of an exploration lab, jazz like that. Uh, questions, that kind of stuff. Okay, so fair warning, I am known as the HH chemist on canvas. <laughs> HH now you know means Henderson Hasselbach, two scientists that figured out that you can do some cool things with buffers. And even though we're focusing on buffers right now, we'll be able to use this to talk about the pH of titrations and also to calculate the pH of any combination of acids and bases. So uh, as we talked about on Wednesday, Henderson Hasselbach, pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. All right. The acid and bases will be conjugates of each other. They have to be weak acids and bases. You can't have strong acids and strong bases. So as an example, you could have uh, ammonia and ammonium on the bottom. That would be legit. You could have acetic acid on the bottom and acetate on the top. But you wouldn't want to have, for example, acetate and ammonium. Those aren't conjugates of each other. And also you don't want to have anything with a strong acid or a strong base. Um, there's some really cool things that come out of HH. Um, first of all, you can probably see here that pH of a buffer system depends on two things. It depends on the pKa. And pKa equals minus log of Ka. So if you have an equilibrium constant for the acid, which by the way is at the end of problem set two and problem set three, you can look those numbers up, pKa is one of the things that determines it. So the other thing though, and this is what I consider to be kind of like a fine tuning amount, is you can play with the amount of base relative to acid to adjust the pH a little bit, all right? Now, as we talked about on Wednesday, if you add base, your pH will go up, all right? It might be 0 0.00001 units, but it will go up because bases contribute to hydroxide. Acids, on the other hand, will make the pH go down, all right? And again, we don't know how much it's gonna go down, but adding an acid will make it go down. And that's kind of cool. The other thing is that because this is a ratio of base to acid, it really is more about a ratio of moles. It's not so much about the volume. So in theory, you can take a buffer and dilute it with water, and you'll still have the same pH of the buffer. And so there's interesting things you can do. So having the ability to focus on just moles is one of the things that makes HH really cool. Because if you have an ice table, you have to use moles per liter, all right? That's kind of the dogma. But with HH equation, you can just use moles. So again, because I'm so passionate about it, I do encourage you to check this handout out. It's about buffers and the HH guide. But again, we're gonna talk about more than buffers, but the HH uh, definitely plays a part here. So we did this problem on Wednesday, but I wanna do it again here real fast. We've got acetic acid. It's got a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. So pKa would be minus log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five that comes out to be 4.74. And in this question, we're gonna have acetic acid and sodium acetate. And by the way, the Ka of course comes from the acid. The base would have a Kb, but we want the Ka from the acid. And we want our buffer to have a pH of five. So immediately at this point, I stop looking at what the rest of the question says, and I look at pH five versus pKa because if the base and acid amounts were equal, all right, we'd have log of one. What's some number over some number? If they're the same, that would be log of one. And what is log of one equal to? Zero, that's right. So initially, your buffer is gonna be about a pH of 4.74, all right? And that assumes that this ratio is equal, but that's really gonna be helpful in determining what you think the best buffer is. So if the base and acid ratio is equal, pH and pK are gonna be the same, it'll be about 4.74. Now, 
we want a pH of five. So a pH of five versus a pH of 4.74. Is that more acidic, more basic, or about the same? Basic. Basic, right on. It's a bigger number. pH goes up, more base. So what this tells you then is you're gonna have to add more base relative to the acid to make the pH go from 4.74 to five. So the rest of this question says, what's the ratio of the base to the acid? Well, we need more base. We have to make it more basic than 4.74. So we're gonna to have to add somewhat more base than acid. So the one-to-one -one ratio would not apply because if this was one-to-one, -one, we'd have log of one, which is zero, and your pH and pKa would be the same. The answer is either gonna be B or D. All right, it won't be C because C has too much acid relative. This would create a pH that was less than 4.74. And if you can at least get to answer B and D, that's awesome. Now five to 4.74 isn't a huge deal, so I would make my guess that it was B, and if you actually throw it into your calculator, that's what you'll find. So what you can do here is pH five equals pKa 4.74 plus log base over acid, and that's the ratio you want. So five minus 4.74 is 0.26. To get rid of the log, 10 to the X, 10 to the 0.26 is where the 1.8 number came from. So that's just telling you, you need 1.8 moles of base relative to one mole of acid to make that pH happen. Any questions on that? Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back uh, to an example and stuff like that and think about what's going to happen here as we add a pH where we had one milliliter of one molar HCl to pure water and we're also going to add it to a buffer, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's assume that our pure water started at a pH of perfect 7.00. And again, you can make it pH seven, usually it's a little acidic, but we'll assume it's exactly seven. And in the second one, we're gonna add the same one milliliter, but now to a buffer. And on uh, Wednesday, we calculated that the pH of that, this buffer system is 4.68. You can look back there. Okay, so for the first part, what we're gonna use is the pH of a strong acid. Now, strong acids and strong bases dominate. They push the reaction to the product side. So there's no worrying about Ka's and Kb's when it comes to strong acids, strong bases. And literally, the concentration of the acid is the concentration of the hydronium. So only thing we have to do here is find out what exact concentration we have when we put a milliliter of this HCl into a liter of water. Well, officially then, one mole per liter is the concentration we started with, and we took one milliliter of that one molar solution. We're trying to solve what the new concentration is. There's a total of 1,001 milliliters, all right? A liter is 1,000 milliliters, so 1,000 plus one. M2 comes up to be almost one times 10 to the minus three, not quite, but pretty close. So pH minus log of this number, pH is 3.00. So notice here that only a milliliter, which is hardly anything, it's about 20 drops, a milliliter made our pH drop from seven to three. So strong acids and strong bases, nothing to mess around with, all right? They, uh, they're pretty good. Now today in lab, or Wednesday in lab, lab on Wednesday, uh, you're gonna use 12 molar HCl, all right? So this is one molar HCl, and it drops that pH like it was going out of style. Uh, 12 molar is, is the big brother. So when you're using the 12 molar HCl today, please be very careful. I would recommend wearing goggles and stuff like that. But anyway, profit back on. One milliliter of HCl to a liter of water drop the pH from seven to three. And again, that's the effect of the strong acid. Any questions? Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna add it to a buffer. Now that one milliliter, all right, dropped the pH, essentially four pH units. And for a logarithmic scale, that's pretty fantastic. 
So in a buffer system, what you should do is strong acids and strong bases, like I've been saying, are hunter killers. They're so product favored that they don't make equilibrium. They only go one way. So when you add a strong acid to a strong base, you're gonna go through what I call a double ice problem. And I'll tell you a way to cheese it. Anyway, so in this double ice system, the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna deal just with the HCl because HCl doesn't mess around. All right, HCl is either in or out, but it doesn't mess around. Now in this problem, what that means is HCl is gonna go after this weak base, all right? And it's gonna annihilate all of the base that it can. So this first one is just gonna be the hydronium from the HCl reacting with the base and the buffer, all right? And they're gonna knock each other out. We're gonna use a one-sided arrow, but in the process, they're gonna make more of the conjugate acid. So this is the weird thing about buffers. Their weak systems create the conjugates. So even though we're adding a strong acid, we will be making acid, but it's not gonna be as intense as with the HCl. So the first ice table of this double ice system would look like this, all right? This is the concentration of the HCl we did earlier. We took one milliliter times one mole per liter, divided it by 1,001 milliliters. We got this funky number here. That's going to use all of itself up, so there's not any hydronium at the end here. In the process, it will lower the amount of the acetate. So you can see the acetate ion goes down. But in the process, it ends up making more of the conjugate acid. So you can see here what happened. The hydronium from HCl, it lowered the base and it raised the weak acid. Okay, So that's the effect of this. And again, this is the first of these kind of ice tables. It's not really an ice table because we're not going to calculate equilibriums and stuff, but you kind of need to know how many moles of the base are left and how many moles of the acid are now present. Okay, we're going to use these two numbers now to calculate the pH of our new buffer concentrations. So these two numbers right here, I'm going to use on the next slide. This is the concentration of the acid and this is the concentration of the base. Okay, so a second ice table, like I said, it's kind of like double ice, and this looks more like what we did on Wednesday. In this case, the acid is gonna go down by X, the acetate will go up by X. And because we're thinking about it from the acid's perspective, hydronium is created, it'll be some really small amount X, okay? So at equilibrium, 0.701 minus X for the acid, 0.599 plus X for the base, and X will just be the hydronium. Now these values right here, we will let equal to the Ka for acetic acid. So Ka for acetic acid was 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Like before, we're gonna think about if we can get rid of the minus X and the plus X there, now, earlier, uh, hydronium was 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5, which was really small. So that number plus, or excuse me, plus 0.599, or this number subtracted from 0.701, it really won't make any difference, all right? It's going to be super, super small. So in this problem, like a lot of these buffer problems, you can ignore the minus x and the plus x. So if you do that, Hydronium times acetate divided by acetic acid equal Ka. So let's rewrite this now as hydronium equals concentration of the acid times Ka divided by the acetate. I'm writing that because we have these three species and we're trying to find X, the hydronium. Now the acid was 0.701, the base was 0.599, and Ka, which you could look up from a table for acetic acid, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Well, you throw this all in, hydronium, 2.1 times 10 to the minus five, pH minus log of that number, 4.68. 
And why this is kind of cool in my world, all right, is that on Wednesday when we did this problem, the pH was 4.68 without adding any HCl. Now, after adding a milliliter of HCl to the same buffer system, your pH has not changed. It dropped the pH four orders of magnitude, essentially, when it was to water. But man, those buffers, they fought it off. No change whatsoever. So, a couple of things here. Adding strong acids and strong bases to buffers is something that you'll do. And the way to do it, really, is to do what I call double ice. The first ice table is just taking into account that strong acids and strong bases, 100% product favored. So you find the new concentrations, then you use those new concentrations. Often you can get rid of the minus X and plus X and just solve for hydronium. And then minus log of hydronium will equal uh, the pH. But usually the pH change is pretty small. Here it was a zero pH change. And again, that wasn't a small amount of HCl that dropped the pH from seven to three in the previous example. Here it didn't even phase the buffer, it's still 4.68. So the way to <clears throat> cheese this is just don't do any math, just say it's that. <laughs> oh, I haven't shown you the cheese deluxe pizza coming your way, Clifford. So hang on, man. Uh, Clifford used a lot of cheese references on Wednesday, which I must admit I kind of like. So, um, so yeah, so this is the formal way, Clifford, and I'll show you a really cool expression here. That I'm... Cool, so hang tight, I'll get back. Uh, questions on this process. All right, <clears throat> now, you can also, though, use the henderson Azlebach. Now, using a double ice expression is very tedious, as you can probably imagine. You gotta think about the new concentrations and stuff like that. Well, because henderson Hasselbach can be molarity or moles, let's rewrite the henderson Hasselbach and take into account the effect of adding a strong acid. So henderson hasselbach pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. Well, if you add a strong acid to a buffer, it will lower the amount of base because acids and bases are attacking each other. But as much as this one goes down, the other one will go up. So the base is gonna go down as you add strong acids, but as much as this base goes, as strong, blah, 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 as much as the conjugate base decreases, the weak acid in the buffer will increase. So you're gonna use this number twice. The strong acid will lower the base and add to the weak acid, all right? Now, we didn't use pKa in the last example, but again, it's pretty easy. Minus log of Ka, 4.74, no problem. So if you do this in a liter of buffer, which is what we have in this problem, you'd have 0 0.600 moles of, strong, of weak base initially and 0 0.700 moles of weak acid. And you figure out the moles, which you can do on your own. The moles of HCl, this number, is gonna lower the base and it's gonna add to the weak acid. So you can see the same number was used twice here, but one with a negative and one with a positive. And when you use the HH equation, you get a pH of 4.67. Now realize that that double ice method took me like three or four keynote slides here to go through in order to explain it. Here, I pop up one equation, you're good to go. So, wow, this is a really, really nice use of the Henderson Hasselbach. It's great on accommodating pH changes when you add a strong acid like here, or as we'll see in a little bit of strong base. Otherwise, it's double ice, and there's nothing wrong with double ice. I've done a lot of it myself. However, once I saw the lights, no, the Henderson Hasselbach really was pretty cool for this kind of stuff, if you appear to. Yeah, double ice or double cheese. <laughs> <laughs> double ice or double cheese. <laughs> yes, that's the expression of the day, Clifford, right there. <laughs> cool. Again, you don't have to do anything with Henderson Hasselbach. You think it's lame. I won't be offended, <laughs> all right, or anything like that. However, I am trying to show you some ways to save some time. So, yeah. I'm confused by 
by it. Well, you should probably have come on time, G. That might have helped a little bit to get you up to speed. So after that, I, would, I do recommend checking out this handout, <laughs> all right? And the handout has a lot of examples in there and stuff like that. Yeah, so check it out. You're going to get it, G. You've got a good math base and stuff, so uh, just got to take some time. So. Other questions? All right. This is the expression for adding a strong acid to a buffer. And again, remember that acids and bases, they're kind of the opposite. So a strong acid will lower the base, but a strong acid will contribute to the acid. As the base is used up, the conjugate will appear. And as much as the conjugate base goes down, the weak acid will go up. It's a similar process for strong bases. Notice the signs have changed, all right? If you add a strong base, it'll lower the amount of weak acid you have, but in the process of lowering the weak acid, more of the conjugate base will appear. So when you're doing these kind of problems, all right, use the moles, don't use molarity. All right, molarity will get you in trouble. But the moles are really cool. The number is the same. Again, the base will add to the conjugate base and take away from the weak acid. The acids will lower the base and add to the weak acids. And again, I do recommend that handout and stuff for checking it out. So. Cool. So, here's a question. Adding a small amount of a strong base to a buffer, what's going to happen? All right. And the questions are increase pH, increase pH, decrease pH, decrease pH, et cetera, et cetera. Will a base make the pH go up or down? Ah, oh, that's right, yeah. So C, D, and E are out, all right? Because bases aren't gonna make your pH decrease. pHs are gonna make your uh, pH increase. So the question is then, is the strong base going to increase the pH because of the strong base? Or is it really more due to the weak base in the buffer? And here's where your understanding of how this stuff works will really help out. The base attacks the weak acid, all right? It doesn't really do anything. And assuming you haven't exhausted the buffer, which we won't talk about so much in this class, the acid will go down. But it's the conjugate base increase which is going to make your pH go up. So it's because the strong base attacks the weak acid, the weak strong base is gonna to be totally gone in the kind of examples we're gonna look at. It's the weak base in the buffer which is gonna make your pH go up. So while the strong acid would have made that pH solution go down by like four units if it was unbuffered, the strong acid had almost no effect, all right? Maybe a tiny bit, but not very much because that base attacked the strong acid and a little bit of the conjugate was made in the process. So it's the resulting extra weak base which is going to make your pH go up. And again, it might be 0.000001 units or something, but it will go up a little bit because of that. Any questions? So here's actually pictures. I had to dig around a little bit to find these of Henderson and Hasselbach, which I thought was, they look like good old classic cis males. But anyway, let's say that you want to create a buffer, all right, for biology or whatever. And you want to have a solution that's about a pH of 4.30, all right? Well, hydronium for a pH of 4.30, you go 10 to the minus 4.30. That means you want a hydronium of about 5.0 times 10 to the minus five. Uh, so you go to the stock room and you're looking for different acids and bases combinations, all right? And while you're looking in the stock room, what really helps here is that you should look for a, a, a buffer system where the hydronium is approximately equal to Ka or pH is about equal to pKa. Henderson Hasselbach, once again, pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. If you want a pH that's about 4.30, then ideally you want to start with a pKa as close to 4.30 as you can. And if you have a list of the pKa values of the different buffer systems you have, 
you'd want one that was about that same. However, a lot of times you don't have that kind of a luxury. So the other thing you could do is you want a Ka about equal to your hydronium. So you can convert the pH you want into hydronium and look for a Ka that's about 5.0 times 10 to the minus five. Once you have one that's close, then you can adjust that base acid ratio to get the exact buffer that you need. Um, inevitably, you go to the stockroom and you don't have all the chemicals you'd like. So you look at what you've got, you pick the one that's closest, and then you adjust that base acid combination to make it happen. Remember, adding more base makes the pH go up, and adding more acid makes the pH go down. So let's say that we look in our lab and we find three possible buffer combinations, all right? Hydrogen sulfate and sulfate, acetic acid and acetate, and this thing is hydrocyanic acid and cyanide. By the way, this is incredibly toxic. You wanna to make sure you have gloves, you know, goggles, all that kind of stuff, but it would be a potential buffer system. Uh, so we look up in tables uh, what the Ka values are. 1.2, 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus five, 10 to the minus 10. Uh, sometimes buffer systems will have pKa's listed, but you can calculate it if you don't have it. So minus log of this number gives 1.92, et cetera, et cetera. So if we want a buffer, which is about 4.30, we wanna find a pKa, which is as close to 4.30 as we can. If you only have Ka's, which happens, convert your pH to hydronium, and in this case, you'd wanna have a Ka that's closest to 5.0 times 10 to the minus five. So which of these three would be the best buffer system for what we're looking for? Acid, acetic, whatever. Acetic acid, acid acetate. Acetate. that's yeah. right. Yep, that's, you don't have to say. <laughs> Just the H, at least. <laughs> yeah, you want to have the middle one, all right? And uh, just to make sure that's really clear, pKa and our desired pHs are pretty close to each other. Also, Ka and hydronium are pretty close to each other. Um, this one would be too acidic, all right? If the uh, ratio of the acid and base were equal, pH would be about 1.92. This one here would be too basic, all right? We'd end up with a pH closer to 9.4. And it's not that you can't, you know, acidify the heck of it to make it 4.30, but you'd have to do less work, if you will, with this one right here. Now, if the initial pH is gonna be about 4.74, and we wanna have a pH of 4.30, do we want to have more base relative to acid or more acid relative to base? More acid. Acid, that's right. We want the pH to go down. It's going to start off with a one-to-one -one ratio of about 4.74, and we want a pH of 4.30. So we're going to have to make it more acidic, all right? We're going to end up with more acid relative to base when we do this all wrong. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's find the ratio of the acid and base, or base to acid, that we would need in order to get our buffer to a 4.30. All right, so there's different ways you can do this. If you want, you can start with the Ka expression. Now, Ka for any acid, the acid is in the denominator plus water, don't include that. That equals hydronium plus the base. So if you rearrange for the hydronium, all right, which is what we have this number right here, then you've got acid to base ratio, because hydronium's here, you gotta put acid, base, and stuff like that, uh, times 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. When you do all this work here and you get the acid to base ratio, so this divided by this, it comes out to be 2.8 to one. All right, you'd get 2.8, and that implies like one mole of this to 2.8 moles of that. So what this number would tell you is that for every one mole of the base acetate you'd put in, you would put 2.8 moles of acetic acid in. So if you put 0.1 moles in, you'd have 0.28 moles of the acid, stuff like that. Now, 
here's another type of thing. We want a ratio, again, 2.8 to 1. And let's say that we uh, have 0 0.10 moles of sodium acetate inside. Then 0.1 times 2.8 over 1 would give you 0.28 moles. And again, that should give you a pH of 4.30. Now again, in the back of your mind, keep thinking. Because pH and pKa, all right, pH, we want to have a little bit more acidic than the pKa, which was 4.74. So we're going to have to add more acid than base, all right, because that will make our pH go down. And this 2.8 ratio should be cool. Now, <laughs> double ice or double cheese, whatever you want to do. You can also do this with Henderson Hasselbach pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. Now, pH we want 4.30, pKa 4.70. So 4.3 minus 4.74 minus 0.44. We got to get rid of the log. So 10 to the power of, all right? Uh, yeah, so this goes on the other side. I think that's supposed to be 0.36. Sorry about that. Uh, it should say point, there's a little typo right here. My apologies. This should say 0.36 equals base over acid. And because we had acid over base before, 1 over 0.36 gives you 0.2.8. Sorry about that. That's a little unclear. I've got to fix that. Try to be fancy with my double cheese and get a little too excited. So. Sometimes the old ways are the best. Qu questions on. Yeah, John. What numbers do you put in for acid and conjugate base? Cool. So uh, it kind of, it's up to you. Uh, in this example, John, I started with 0 0.10 moles of sodium acetate. So that times 2.8 is how you got that. But John, if you had 0 0.005 here, all right, no problem. 0 0.005 times 2.8 would, would give you that number. Um, if you started with this number, you would divide by 2.8 to get this number right here. So it really is up to you, all right? It, honestly, in my opinion, it kind of depends on how much stuff you've got. So 2.8 over 1 is the conjugate base of the conjugate acid? Uh, it's the acid over the base. Um, oh, okay. the, the acid, John, always has more hydrogen, okay? You can do it the other way around. Like base over acid in my typo version here um, was 0.36. So you can do it that way too. Um, I was trying to make it consistent in the two slides and I kind of spazzed it here. So. Still good though. <laughs> Hopefully you get the idea. Questions? So here's another example of how this process works. This is a hydrogen carbonate carbonate system. Now again, remember that sodiums, potassiums, those kind of things, as well as nitrates, they are just they just dissociate off. They're, they're spectators, they don't affect pH, blah, blah, blah. So this system is hydrogen carbonate as an acid reacting with liquid water, so it doesn't part of the equilibrium, to make hydronium and carbonate, the conjugate base. And the question is, what is the pH of this system? So once again, you can see that this is a buffer system. All right, more hydrogen, less hydrogen, conjugates of each other, this is going to be a buffer. And to find the pH of this problem, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could set it up like an ice table. All right, hydrogen carbonate would go down, these two would go up by x, and you can solve for hydronium. Minus log hydronium would be pH. But again, you're probably sick of me saying it, Henderson Hasselbach. Uh, so pH is what you want to solve for. You'd have to find the pKa. So you'd look up the Ka for the hydrogen carbonate from that table minus log. You'd find the moles of both of these. So turn grams into moles. Moles of the carbonate would go on top because that's the base, divided by the moles of the hydrogen carbonate on the bottom. Prepare our buffer solution. We first weigh our conjugate pair, 16.0 grams of sodium carbonate, the weak base, and 8.4 grams of sodium bicarbonate, the weak acid. We dissolve these solids in 100 milliliters of water. The final buffer solution has a volume of about 120 milliliters and a pH of 10.5. 
officially when you have a buffer. Because it's a ratio of base to acid, you can use molarity over molarity or moles over moles. So you can say it's about 100 milliliters if you want to, but to get this answer, which I do encourage you to try just to make sure you're good to go, you don't really need to do it if you use Henderson Hasselbach, all right? Now, Aiden says, man, I'm gonna do ice tables. That's awesome, go for it. It's not a problem, all right? Then you would use moles over liters to figure out X's and stuff like that. That being said, moles, yeah. Any questions? So buffers are actually part of certain types of titrations. Again, the goal of this whole section is that I want you to be able to calculate the pH upon adding any combination of acid to any combination of base, all right? And that's a pretty big thing, but it is totally doable. Now, in order to understand how to do that, we're gonna look a little closer now at what's a titration, all right? because titrations span the gamut of having like extra moles of base or extra moles of acid and how to deal with the different calculations that come around it. Um, to be fair, there are other variations of these titrations, but 99.9%, .9 I would argue, of what chemists do falls into the stuff we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna start looking here at titration calculations. And along the way, we'll be able to figure out how much pH is there, how much acid, how much base. Um, in a titration calculation, they have this kind of nomenclature, and I wanna talk about what this means. There's strong acids and weak acids, SA and, and WA, as well as, of course, strong bases and weak bases. And the first thing that's listed is what you start with. And the second thing that's listed is what you add from the burette. So in this one, we would start with a strong acid and we'd slowly add in amounts of strong base. This one right here, we would start with a weak base and we would slowly add in strong acid, all right? Notice that there's no uh, type of example where there's weak acid or weak base being added in. All right, strong acids and strong bases are much easier to use, and that is by far the most common way of titrations. So all the second things, the pieces we add in, will be almost always known strong acids and strong bases. Now, another thing we did in the last section is we talked about what will happen when a strong acid and a strong base comes together, i.e. HCl plus NaOH. And in the last section, if we had a strong acid like HCl and a strong base like NaOH, all right, these two flip around, they will always make water and some kind of salt. In this case, the salt would be true table salt, sodium chloride, but it could be potassium bromide or whatever. The important thing for us right now is that strong acids and strong bases don't go in reverse. They're not equilibrium systems. So any salt that's made from a strong acid plus strong base or strong base plus strong acid, pH neutral doesn't affect your pH. So equivalence means that the moles of the acid and the moles of the base are equal. And if you have an equivalence point, between a strong acid and a strong base, or a strong base and a strong acid, your pH should be the pH of neutral water. And assuming it's truly neutral water, it should be pH of seven. So when you do a titration, all right, you'll be able to find the equivalence. We'll see examples of that here in a little bit. And if your pH at that equivalence point is about seven, you've probably got a strong acid, strong base combination. Now, a weak acid and a strong base, when they have equal moles, it's a different story. So if you have one mole of NaOH and one mole of acetic acid, the strong base annihilates all the acetic acid, nothing left. However, conjugates create their conjugate systems. So a weak acid would create a conjugate base so acetic, if acetic acid was our weak acid, all of a sudden now we have a lot of acetate. 
and acetate is a weak base. So the equivalence point between weak acids and strong bases will be basic. It won't be pH of seven. I told you that if you had to, you could maybe drink one of these guys, even though I won't let you. You wouldn't want to drink either one of these blanks at equivalence because those guys will have a pH effect. Same thing for a weak base plus strong acid. When the moles are equal, all of the weak base has turned into a conjugate acid, acid being the operative word. So pH is gonna be less than seven for acids. So when you're doing a titration, this equivalence point is actually something that's relatively easy to see. We'll fit, look at that here in a little bit. And the uh, titrations are further divided into what are called regions, where in those different regions, one species, either what you started with or what you're adding, dominates. And we can use a pH expression for what's dominating to figure out what the pH is gonna be. Now, the reason we went so much into buffers, Henderson Hasselbach, blah, 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 is because buffers will be useful in the weak base plus, or weak acid plus strong base titrations, as well as the weak base plus strong acid titrations. And we'll see that in a little bit. So that's why, another reason why buffers are helpful here. Next week in lab, we're gonna do a lab called titration calculations. And it's just gonna give us examples of how to do these things. It's not hard, it's all plug and chug. Bring your calculators, definitely, but it's uh, something that will really be helpful because then you'll be able to calculate the pH of almost any combination. Then we'll be able to tell if they can drink it or not. <laughs> You know, I already have gray hair as it is, Clifford, so uh, thanks for contributing to more. No, seriously. Uh, no, we'll die. No one's drinking acid. No, don't, yeah. drop, don't drop any acid in my class either. There's another bad joke that goes along. It's really corny, I apologize. Keep my day job, I know, yeah. Question? I'll make sure not to tell them if I You can tell me anything. <laughs> Other, I think I, all right, let's, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of hints when we go into this section. All right, first of all, uh, the equations we're gonna see are pretty impressive looking, but just keep your cool, all right? And here's some things that will help. First of all, those acids and bases annihilate whatever the opposite is around them. They don't mess around. No equilibrium, no partial conversion. They still, <laughs> sorry, that sound effects were really not necessary. Strong acids and strong bases, one direction, all right? And that'll actually help us when we start going through this. On the other hand, those crazy weak acids and weak bases, they create their conjugates. So it's like, oh, I'm wiped out by the strong acid. <laughs> the uh, conjugate then comes in to have an effect on pH. So in some ways, these, you gotta be a little careful. They're just kind of funky. Those conjugates come back to haunt us a little bit, but it's all stuff you can do. KA and KB, which will be helpful with weak acids and weak bases. You can look them up in a table, but of course someone had to figure out those KAs and KBs in the first place. Titrations are a great way to find what your KA and KB is, and we'll talk about how to find those. So, you know, like we did a calculation for an equilibrium constant uh, in the lab, and Oh boy, that was fun. <laughs> but anyway, there is actually a way from titrations you can get it directly, which is another use of these kind of things. Um, uh, Clifford was uh, asking about this earlier, which is really cool. Remember that Ka times Kb does equal Kw at room temperature, all right? So if you have a Kb, you can quickly find Ka. Uh, if you do research on the human body, which is about 37 degrees Celsius, uh, some of these calculations may have to be adjusted a little bit too. So just letting you know that too. Uh, PKA and PKB will be helpful to us. Remember that PKA minus log KA, PKB minus log KB, et cetera, et cetera. Also, PKA plus PKB equals 14. So just like pH plus POH equals 14, PKA plus PKB also equals 14. So if you have to know one or the other. Also, it's gonna be really good to know how much uh, volume you started with or how much volume you've added and also the concentrations. You've gotta have something to work with. And again, usually what you add from the burette, the second piece, so SA plus SB, that would be the SB after the plus. 
usually that is something we know right away, and that will help you then define the other pieces as you go. The molecule of hydrogen chloride and a water molecule encounter each other. They react to form a hydronium ion, H3O+, and a chloride ion. When sodium hydroxide enters the solution, it splits into sodium and hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ion and the hydronium ion react readily with each other to form two molecules of water. Sodium and chloride ions are left in solution. By the way, it's kind of an aside, all these titrations are really in some ways about forming water, which is just incredible. Uh, water seems so trivial, like we use it all the time, you know, we drink it, and use it, comes out of our tap, et cetera, et cetera. But really, all these titrations are run by the process of making water, which is kind of cool. But anyway, this is an example of a titration graph between a strong acid and a strong base. If you're starting with acid and you're adding a base, it looks kind of like an S-curve. They call these S-curves. And you have to use your imagination a little bit, definitely. But the S-curve is what they start with. Now, let's say that we were looking at this for the first time and we didn't know what it was, all right? Well, this is usually volume in milliliters of what you're adding, and this is a pH graph. So at zero milliliters of whatever we adding, the pH was about one. Are we starting then with an acid or a base based on that pH? Acid, that's right. So if you're starting with an acid, it had better be less than seven, right? If you're starting with a base, it'll be up here. All right, so it'll be a different kind of thing. So one thing you can tell right away is if you're starting with an acid or a base on its relative part of the pH scale. Now, all these S curves have what they call the steep portion, all right, which you kind of see is like right here. And if you take the halfway point between that steep part, that's the equivalence point. And if your equivalence point, the middle part of the steep part, is about a pH of seven, that means it's a strong acid plus strong base titration. Notice that as you add volume, the pH is getting bigger. All right, the pH is increasing. Well, pH increases if you have a base. So we know we're adding a base to it. And because this equivalence point is right about seven, that means this is gonna be a strong acid plus strong base. So you can usually tell then, if you don't know anything about this system, at least give it a good guess what's happening. You're starting with something acidic, it looks like it's strong acid plus strong base, etc. So, so far, we've looked at what we're gonna call the initial point, as well as the equivalence point. Initial point is where you only have moles of strong acid. NSA is not the government group that makes you put little pieces of paper over your camera on your computer or phones. NSA stands for moles of strong acid. N was moles in the ideal gas law. You can see it's continuing on. So initially, we have only moles of strong acid. At equivalence, moles of strong acid equal moles of strong base, moles of what you're adding. And again, for strong acid plus strong base, that pH should be right around seven. Now, not very creatively, but anything before equivalence but after initial is called pre-equivalence region. And pre-equivalence region is good to know because moles of strong acid will be greater than moles of strong base. So the pH in this pre-equivalence region is gonna be the pH of a strong acid. You've gotta take into account the amount of base that's been added, but it will be the pH expression for a strong acid. Now, once you go past equivalence, now you're starting to get into basic pHs. And that's because past equivalence, now NSB, the moles of strong base, will be greater than the moles of strong acid. So the post-equivalence region is gonna be dominated by a pH expression for like a strong base. So hopefully you can kind of see where we're going with this. Equivalence is where the moles are equal. Initial, nothing, you haven't added anything of the other stuff. Pre-equivalence, post-equivalence, questions? All right, we'll do more of this on Monday. Have a good day. I will see most of you at one o'clock, one ten today.